Hey guys, it's Mr. Harry. I've spent the last several years sharing some of my backyard with you. A few years back, my friend Jeff, who works with trees for his job, planted a Fuji apple tree and a Golden Delicious apple tree in my backyard. Since then, we've watered those trees, given them sunlight, and picked apples every fall or autumn. I decided that it was time to check on my apple trees once again. Excited to pick fresh apples, I was terribly disappointed to see that for the first time ever, my new fall harvest wasn't looking so good. The first thing I noticed was splotchy leaves on my trees. The most obvious thing I noticed was oddly shaped, splotchy, and sometimes even rotten apples. My family wondered what could have happened. We learned that most of this had to do with the incredibly rainy summer we had just endured in Pennsylvania. While apple trees do need water to live, too much water can sometimes be a problem. Boy, did it ever show! We also noticed that many of our apples had already been knocked off the trees by critters, and eaten by them too! We were in need of a pick-me-up, so I decided to take my family to a place where people grow apples for a living, not just in a backyard. We drove out to one of my favorite family fun spots, Way Fruit Farm in Port Matilda, PA. This is the same fruit farm that I take my kindergarten class to every year for a field trip. Lucky for us on this weekend, the fruit farm was allowing families to do something we had never done before. Pick real apples from real trees in their real life apple orchard. Awesome! We had gone through the orchards many times before on a wagon, but we had never gotten the chance to walk right up to the trees and pick apples ourselves. I was curious as to what type of apples we'd be picking. My kindergarten class had learned that there were so many different kinds, like Red Delicious, Golden Delicious, Granny Smith, Honeycrisp, Fuji, and countless more. But what kind would we be picking today? The friendly people at Way Fruit Farm told us that we were allowed to pick Gala apples today. This was funny because I had just shown my students Gala apples last week. They're mostly reddish and pinkish, but can also have a whole lot of yellow. They told us we would also see a few Honeycrisp apple trees, but mostly Gala. There were different sized bags and containers you could put your apples in, like a peck or a half bushel. We were feeling ambitious, so we bought the big bag, an entire half bushel, ready to be filled. One of the rules in the orchard was that you could only pick apples on the trees. You couldn't pick apples that had already fallen to the ground. And this was a bummer because we saw hundreds and hundreds of rich red apples on the ground. Sometimes we would see an apple ripe for the picking on the outside of trees, but other times we'd have to go right inside the trees to find some bigger bunches. There's my children, Justice and Paxton now, bringing out new apples for our bag. You might remember from my last apple tree video that many of the apples on the inside of the trees didn't get as much sunlight, so they end up not having as much red. This is also why the hundreds of apples on the ground seem to have a vibrant red color. They've been receiving direct sunlight for quite a long time now. We also have to keep in mind that the apple sellers at this farm told us apples tend to ripen from the outside in. Firm and crisp means ready to pick. I've been studying apples for quite some time now, and I've always heard that you shouldn't just pull the apples off the branch. Instead, roll the apple upwards off the branch and give a little twist. Pulling straight down can make too many apples fall off, and we don't want any bruised apples. If two apples are joined together at the top, both will come down at the same time, so be careful. We're also told not to shake the trees or its branches. We're also warned that we should wash our fruit before we eat it. While Justice and Paxton are picking mostly on the lower level of the trees, they are glad to have a really tall dad. I'm able to reach for some of the apples that are really high up. As we continue to twist and pick apples, we notice that some of the apple tree parts are staying attached to our apples by accident. Justice and Paxton are pretty okay with this though, because they think it's cool to see the leaf and stem still on the apple. We've been picking for a while now, so it's time for us to take our apples back to our van and check out what can be done with all of these fabulous apples. We make our way into the Way Fruit Farm store, where we find a variety of ways that apples can be transformed into food and products for sale. We see applesauce, apple chips, apple butter, apple pie, apple schnitz, apple jelly, and of course, apple cider and juice. 
we also see apple cider vinegar and other apple items that are used in cooking and baking. Don't forget just straight up apples too. There's a basket of gala apples, just like the ones we picked earlier. We also see Macintosh, Summer Rambo, and lots of other varieties. After all of our picking, Paxson and Justice are ready to just play for a while, digging around in Wayfruit Farm's corn box. We finish playing and it's time to go home and see what we can make with our apples. While Mrs. Harry has made a lot of different apple foods before, on this day she's ready to make some homemade applesauce in our kitchen. She begins by laying out some beautiful gala apples that we picked earlier in the day. Next, she peels the apples carefully with a small peeler. Check out all of those apple peels and cores. Next, she slices each apple with a knife and puts them right into our crock pot. After a little cinnamon, Mrs. Harry pours apple cider right into the mix, hoping to give our applesauce that rich cider flavor. She covers up the apples and turns up the heat. It's going to take many hours to get our applesauce cooked just right. Mrs. Harry checks it every once in a while and stirs it around. We mash it up a bit, but we like our applesauce pretty chunky. After several hours, our applesauce looks ready to go. We scoop it up into some bowls and we're ready to enjoy homemade applesauce for many days to come. Well, we didn't have the greatest apples on our apple trees this season, but we sure had fun at the apple farm. We can always hope for something better in our yard next year. Until next time!